I'm Matt McClure. And I'm Francesca Maxime, and this is Currents. It's not easy being green, but it's a lot of fun. It's dance, it's food, and it's just the pleasure we take in each other's company. Who's walking with God? The story behind this and other remarkable photographs. Anytime you do something like this, any type of art collection like this, but it's especially one that has to deal with the subject of Jesus Christ, you're going to get some blowback. And Cabbage Patch Kids and Tickle Me Elmo. How about Father Juan Pablo? Lino Rulli looks at a unique toy line. Are you married? No, but he doesn't have a large enough nose. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. If you were at Coney Island this weekend, you may have thought it was an early St. Patrick's Day, but it wasn't that. <laughs> no, in fact, there was a celebration of all things Irish. It was called Brooklyn's 28th Annual Great Irish Fair, with all the proceeds going toward a good cause, the schools of the diocese. And not wanting to miss any of the festivities, we sent our cameras. Have a look. The largest Irish fair in the five boroughs of New York. There's nothing like this anywhere else. And what you'll find today is Irish people coming from all over the place. And what keeps the people together is culture. It's music, it's dance, it's food, and it's just the pleasure we take in each other's company. People come from New Jersey, Connecticut, Long Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, Manhattan, and they all enjoy the Irish culture. This is all about community. It's about faith, it's about family, it's about opportunity. What we do through this event is raise resources and we share them through the Alive and Hope Foundation with people of need. It is an opportunity to celebrate our culture, our heritage, and all for a really good cause. And all of the proceeds of this wonderful fair go to Catholic schools. And it's one of the great things that we Irish Americans like to do is to have fun for a good cause. Uh, I'm a product and a benefit of Catholic education. And I'm very thankful for the opportunities that were afforded me. And I'd like to see other children have uh, the same educational opportunities. I think what we're doing here is a good cause. I think we will help all the schools out with this. Yeah, and both Johnny and I were also uh, had a Catholic education. And I think it's really wonderful that we have a fair like this that's thriving in the way that the Irish fair is and that can bring so many thousands of Irish people together. Because it's events like this that keep the Irish community together. And I think it's marvelous that we've got the weather and we're out enjoying a great day with each other. Big turnout and it seems to be getting bigger and bigger each year. So we can only hope for even improved success. I love watching the Irish dancers. I was here, I was dancing yesterday. So it's fun to see the other schools dance. <laughs> Favorite part of the fair would have to be Saturday morning the mass to open up the, the fair, celebrated by Bishop Sullivan, who confirmed me in 1983, by the way. So we have to keep the tradition up, and the Irish are good with keeping traditions up. So we're here to support the Catholic schools, and I hope you all get out and join us. And it's an annual event, so if you're not here this year, come next year. Brooklyn's Great Irish Fair, good times there for a good cause. And I wish I had been able to go out. I, I planned on it and I wasn't able to, and now I'm kicking myself. Oh, it was a gorgeous day for it, and plenty of good food and stuff. The mayor was out there and yeah. uh, other notables. I know. It, uh, it's one of those things that, like they said, it really brings the community together, but everybody can be Irish for a day, even somebody like me. Absolutely. <laughs> well, see, I'm uh, part Irish, and uh, I would have loved to have been there. Of course, 
there was great food. Leave it to me to bring up the food. Yes. But uh, no, it looked like a great time, and of course for a great cause. Right, for the schools of the Brooklyn Diocese. That's right. Well, there's much more currents coming up straight ahead. Yes, you can kiss the saint, overcoming fears about swine flu. That and the rest of the day's headlines when we return. And in Texas schools, religion is okay, but don't talk about Christmas. Welcome back to Currents, I'm Matt McClure. And I'm Francesca Maxime. Coming up a little bit later, toys with a faith-filled twist. Lino really takes a look. It should be interesting, but first, let's have a look at the day's headlines. How can the Christian minority survive in the Middle East? Well, that is a question Pope Benedict will address when he convenes a synod or gathering of bishops next October. Bishops from Eastern churches will participate. U2's Bono and composer Ennio Morricone are just some of the artists who will meet with the Pope in November. Benedict wants to develop a closer relationship with today's artists. A Vatican official says those invited were selected based on their reputations and the awards they've received. Among other artists set to attend, architect Daniel Liebskin, who designed the reconstructed World Trade Center. Well, it's never too early to talk about Christmas, but you may not be able to talk about it at all at schools in Texas. CNN's Carla Castano has that story. It really looks like we're putting politics ahead of sound scholarship and quality education. Kathy Miller is with a political group herself and not too pleased that the board appears to be siding with the Free Market Foundation to return Christmas and Rosh Hashanah to the list of religious holidays sixth graders should learn. They agreed with us that it was outrageous and so I think I think you'll find this is an issue that cuts across party lines. I think there's significantly broad support for returning to the original standard. I don't think anybody on our board intends to take out Christmas. The writing committee explains on this draft their reason for crossing off Christmas and Rosh Hashanah and adding Diwali was so that Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam and Judaism, the five major religions of the world, would be covered. Easter and Yom Kippur were already included. They were attempting to be inclusive in a course about world geography and cultures. Diwali, a Hindu and Buddhist festival, could be cut from the proposed curriculum or the state could keep it along with Christmas and Rosh Hashanah. Diwali is up for anybody's guess. Uh, possibly not. Maybe it'll stay in. There were also concerns that Albert Einstein, Cesar Chavez and former Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall would be eliminated from the curriculum, something the school board says won't happen. We intend that those significant historical figures will remain and I think it's important that well-educated students know about their legacy. That's Carla Castano reporting. Well, even if there is an argument over Christmas, there is a heavenly heart deep in the heart of Texas. A new monastery called Thien Tam, which is Vietnamese for heavenly heart, opened over the weekend. The six monks from Vietnam moved into a home about 70 miles southeast of Dallas on 300 acres. It actually used to be an ostrich ranch. The Benedictine monks will practice communal prayer, meditative reading, and manual labor all virtues inspired by the 6th century rule of St. Benedict, which advises proper daily living. Well, they hope to grow the monastery up to 40 monks and create a retreat center. A Catholic school is getting millions of dollars to convert nuclear waste. Catholic University of America will get $36 million to create glass out of liquid nuclear waste at sites in South Carolina and Washington State. That makes it one of the biggest research contracts in the school's history. The contract only runs six years, but the process of converting that waste will take decades. The federal government says some children may actually need more than one dose of the new swine flu vaccine for it to be effective. The National Institutes of Health announced today that children under the age of 10 may need two shots, 21 days apart, for the vaccine to be effective. Researchers say kids 10 and older will do just fine with one dose of the vaccine. In Naples, Italy, all that fans of the city's patron saint needed to overcome H1N1 fears was a little dose of faith. Saturday, Neapolitan celebrated the feast day of St. Jadarius, or San Gennaro. It is tradition for followers to kiss a glass encasement that contains vials of the saint's clotted blood. Now, the legend goes that if the blood liquefies on the feast day, then it signals good days ahead for Naples. 
Followers were still allowed to kiss the encasement, despite swine flu fears there. As for the blood, it did liquefy. And closer to home, the 11-day feast of San Gennaro in Little Italy wrapped up on Sunday. Well, stay tuned. We've got much more currents coming up straight ahead. Coming up, from fashion to faith, one photographer's work has people talking. Welcome back to Currents. You know, over the centuries, Jesus has been depicted in many different ways, but you've probably never seen him like this. <laughs> well, these are just some of the startling, moving, and provocative images taken by fashion photographer Michael Belk. His work has appeared in Vogue, GQ, and Vanity Fair, but now he's taking his craft in a very different direction. And it's got a lot of people talking. There is no question about it. He's got a unique take on the Gospels, and especially the parables of Jesus. And he's forcing people to see them in a new light. I had a chance to speak with Belk last week by phone and hear him describe what led him to take these pictures and exactly what they mean. All right, Mr. Belk, thank you so much for joining us today on Currents. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, these are really some, some beautiful photographs. I've, I've seen uh, several of them, and they are just beautiful. Why don't you give me a little bit of a history about yourself and uh, what led you to or what inspired you to do this series of photographs? Well, I've been a fashion photographer for 30 years. Uh, not only uh, been a photographer, but designed and produced fashion advertising for a lot of the names that you would recognize in the industry. And about probably halfway into my career, I started asking the question, why me? Why did I get to have such a great job that, you know, took me around the world and and really let me have a lot of fun uh, making a good living. Right. And I started recognizing that I probably uh, had something I needed to give back. Um, several years ago, uh, probably three years ago, was when I got uh, this idea of taking my uh, time and talent and using them to take the messages of Jesus Christ from 2,000 years ago and make them relevant to today. Right. That's how this came about. Uh, have you gotten any feedback of saying, well, maybe I, I, I don't like this so much, seeing Jesus standing beside a sports car or something like that? Anytime you do something like this, any type of art collection like this, but it's especially one that has to deal with the subject of Jesus Christ, you're going to get some blowback. Uh, fortunately, ours has been minimum. In fact, it's been the opposite. People have absolutely loved what they've seen. I've gotten emails from all around the world just uh, thanking me for doing this and, and you know, being blessed for the images and, and how real it makes uh, Jesus and how it connects him to what's going on in their lives today. Um, first of all, there's one of Jesus actually walking down a road uh, with a Nazi. Describe that, kind of explain that to us and the meaning behind that. Well, let me preempt that by saying that all of the images began with messages. What I wanted to share on that image was forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to come up, I didn't necessarily want to come up with an image that was going to be radical or uh, invasive in anybody's life, but that was the image that, that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, what would be more difficult to forgive than Jewish people forgiving the Nazis for the Holocaust? Right, right. Well, what about uh, the one I, which I actually particularly like? It's uh, of Jesus standing to the side of the cross, and the cross actually has a neon vacancy sign on it. I have to tell you, I really love that image. Uh, where the idea came from, it has to only be divine, because I don't think I could think up something like that. Right. But the whole idea is, when you think back to the beginning of Jesus' life, his birth, uh, and the story of Mary and Joseph, you recall there was no room in the inn. Right. But 33 years later, there seemed to be plenty of room for him on the cross. In fact, uh, you know, they were opening doors for him to hang on the cross. Mm. And so, to me, the cross represents, you know, that there's a vacancy for all of us, uh, that we all have a place there in learning how to die to... Uh, our own self needs and live for other people's needs and learn to die to the darkness of this world and open our eyes to the light of Jesus' world. 
Right. Now, one more I wanted to ask you about was uh, there was one where Jesus is kind of standing alongside a sports car. Uh, that one, that one, I think maybe a, a needs a little bit of explanation, at least on my part. I was kind of looking at it, a little scratching my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the rich young ruler. There you go. As you recall, the rich young ruler was very interested in Jesus's message about eternal life. Right. And he asked Jesus, "What do I have to do to get this?" And Jesus said, "You know, follow the commandments." And he says, "Ah, I do that. You know, what else do I need to do?" And Jesus knew what his issue was. It was his money, and it was his lifestyle. And so he said, give it all up. Give it all up. Then follow me. And so here is a, a modern-day uh, rich young man who has a Ferrari. You know, I mean, we were, after all, we were shooting in Italy. You had to have a Ferrari, you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, he's got a beautiful girl sitting in there who's dressed in Armani. Right. And we wanted to set up a situation of you know, I really want to go with you, Christ, but, you know, I really like this lifestyle as well. And so the message there is for all of us to look at our lives and ask ourselves what's holding us back from, from anything in life, but especially from that relationship with Christ. Well, definitely some very powerful, uh, powerful imagery there. Now, what effect are you hoping that these images have on people? I believe that my, my mission is the same for everybody that's at the end of the gospel. Go tell the story. Mm. You know, use all of your God-given talents in every way you can to just go share the story. It doesn't necessarily say we have to go sell the people or that we have to beat them into submission. It just says go tell. Right. And so I'm taking my talents and doing the best I can to go tell the story of Jesus Christ in hopes that it's going to ignite in people who have never known anything about Christ a passion to go know more of him, or for people who are sitting in the pews every week and not really following him to be reignited to say, I need to know more about this man. Well, Michael Belk, thank you so much for uh, being here and joining us today over the phone. We really appreciate it. Thanks for being on Currents. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that is photographer Michael Belk. Some powerful stuff there. What a treat that you got to talk to him. The images are incredible. I especially like the last one and his point about trying to bring it into today's life in situations that people can relate to as opposed to having Jesus be something distant or foreign or from another era or time. Right. Um, instead, someone who very much is walking among us every single day should we choose to pay attention, listen, or look. That's right. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, um, something else that might bring it into a little bit more modern times, too, is... Uh, a little tidbit of information there. He mentioned that they shot the photographs in Italy. Well, actually, it was the same village uh, where Mel Gibson's uh, film *The Passion of the Christ* was mm -hmm. filmed as well. So, a little bit of a little bit of a connection there too. Well, obviously, they must have an affinity for wanting to bring um, you know stories about Christ uh, you know to to light in that particular village. I did love the pictures, and uh, he's actually from where I used to live in Florida, near down oh, near yeah. down there. Yeah, it's too bad that I never knew of him over there, but <laughs> right really, there the really compelling, really it's, compelling. It, yeah, it's very powerful stuff. And actually, if you'd like to find out some more about Michael Buck's work, I've actually posted some more information on our blog, a little bit more about my conversation with him, and a link to his web website as well. Head over to CurrentsNY.net and click on Riding the Wave. That's right there in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Well stay tuned. There's much more current straight ahead. Coming up, Lino Rulli releases his inner child. That's a thoroughbull, kids. Who, what little kid doesn't want to say thoroughbull? Last week, you'll recall, Lino Rulli visited a Catholic marketing trade show in New Jersey. But there's a little more he actually wanted to share with us this week. Oh, Lino, they had a special section there for kids to help teach them about faith. Well, of course, Lino was mesmerized, and this week, this is our catch of the day. Hey, I'm Lino Rulli, here for the Catholic marketing convention. You know, I'm not the most mature guy in the world, so I'm hoping uh, this place is going to have something, you know, some sort of products for a guy with my maturity level. Let's find out. All right, this looks about my speed here with my maturity level. We believers. It really kind of describes my entire faith life. How you doing? Steve? Hi, Steve. Nice to meet Lino, you. Lino, how, how you doing? You? Nice to meet you. All right, this is my type of place. We believers. For people who have very little faith. <laughs> it's for people who want to have more faith. That's all about playing with fun stuff. So all right, this, this, is, this is the toy booth. All right, so well, this is, this is my place, though. Great. I just, uh, I just do have a quick question, though, Steve. Sure. 
Uh, why? We have little kids, and keeping kids quiet in church is always a challenge. Getting kids to understand what's really going on in church when they're really young and as they grow, those are the years they learn everything. So my wife and I decided we need more good stuff for our kids, really good content, high quality, stuff that parents can buy and know that their kids are going to learn from but have a good time with. Toys are for kids. They're meant to be played with. Hey, I think I know. Okay, that's a, a, a incense thing. You can look it up in the book. It's called a thurible. That's a thurible, kids. Who, what little kid doesn't want to say thurible? So every chalice should be gold lined, so it has a gold lining, and it has red inside to signify the precious blood, which is red, right? So there's wow. the two cruets, the, the cruet with the wine in it. And cruet, cruet for, for those <clears throat> that might not know what a cruet is, obviously I clearly... Little glass things that the priest has wine and water in. What's the age for this? I would say something between three and about... Uh, three to eight is perfect, yep. I think most Catholics wouldn't be able to identify you every... You can tell what this is, right? I know what this okay. is. Candle? Call the candle. Okay. Very yeah. good, very good. All right, let's take a look what else you got here. The Catholic Toy Company, We Believers. My mask kit. Now that's available for sale right now on our website or from a retail store, a Catholic retail store. The second two products that are going to be out are the vocation dolls. So here's Father Juan Pablo. Here's Sister Mary Calice Rose. She's over there. We'll show you those dolls in a second. There seems though, there's only one character missing here, actually. The Lino doll could be appearing right here, you know, the single guy without a... Lino? Uh, maybe in a few years with the bald head. By the way, can you make money on a Franciscan monk? I thought poverty was involved. Well, we can make money. He can't. <laughs> My Quiet Church will hopefully be out early 2010. The kids can play baptism. They can play wedding. It's like the mass kit has an instruction booklet. This is going to have an instruction booklet explaining everything inside the church. Will it also explain how kids can be quiet at church? Is there going to be a little pamphlet in that? As there's a section for the parents in the booklet to explain to them how to keep their kids quiet in church. Yes. I will buy this for every single per person in the church. You just are sitting around one day, you go, you know what I need to do? Well, my kids have police little uniforms and they have, you know, soldier hats and all that kind of stuff. Why can't they play ch priest and nun? I mean, isn't that how kids learn to be a fireman? They play fireman, right? This was all your idea? Are you fully to blame? Now you know better than that. I have a wife. Wives have the good ideas. Husbands help carry it out. So you know how it works. All right, let's go meet your wife. All right, Steve, so this is the woman you say this is her responsibility. She's the creative genius to everything. So. All right. I'm Lino. What's your name? Joni Abdallah. All right, so now your husband says you're responsible for all of this. Um, I guess I'll take part of the blame. What do we got here? We got a, uh, This is one of these dolls that we saw over there. Yes, this is Sister Clarissa Rose. Where did you come up with the name, Sister Clarissa Rose? Well, actually, it, it's a derivative of the name Sister Clarice, and she was one of the first African-American nuns to start her own order in the United States. You're making that up? All right, now you also have the, uh, what does Steve call this guy, the uh, Father Juan Pablo? This is not, wait a minute. Are you married? No, but he doesn't have a large enough nose. I think he might. That's a sad reflection. I think you're missing your calling. I am Italian, I look good in black. Now who's Father Juan Pablo? Okay, Father Juan Pablo is our main character. We're going to carry him through all of our products. He'll be a narrator. So the children are familiar, so they have familiar faces. When I grew up, I had action figures, and like Bionic, Bionic Man could have the extra arm and stuff. Does the priest have or the sister have any superpowers? Not yet. We're working on that. <laughs> so is that going to be the next installment of We Believers? Is there going to have some sort of uh, supernatural power? That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I want some of the credit for all of this. I, I want some of the money you guys are making on all this, all right? You're going to have to wait a while. See, we're just one big happy family here with the We Believers. By the way, do you think, does, does this look like me? Does this look like me? No? The doll's nose isn't as big. It's better if the doll has a bigger nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it from here. Oh, oh my wow. goodness, Lino, really a kid in a toy store. <laughs> How cute is that stuff? It's really cool. I like the quiet church thing. Yeah. I think that's going to be really neat when it kind of rolls out there. Teaching kids to be quiet in church and, you know, give them a little thing, something to play with. The My Mask Kit is also really, really cool, too. You know, I, I mean, honestly, there's a part of me that says, are there people that are going to say it's sacrilegious or it's, you know, crazy? Right. But, you know, at the same time, I think it's very apt. You want to mimic the people that you want to grow up and be like, so they have the doll and you want to mimic maybe some of the accoutrements that are necessary in order to, you know, to do that. So it, it kind of makes sense, and they're awfully cute toys. Oh, yeah, they're very, they're very cute. And I love the fact that Lino looks so much like the priest, too. <laughs>
<laughs> that was just nice. Of course, the, you know, the nose, I don't know. But uh, no, it's really, it's really neat and it's really, it gives kids, you know, kids look up to police and firemen and sure. things like that. So they did have a good point and a good idea of yes. doing these kinds of dolls. Yeah, mentoring, so, mentoring. Very neat. Well, that's it for this edition of Currents. Tomorrow, what do Rudolph Valentino, Loretta Young, Donna Michi, and Bob Hope all have in common? Well, they all worshipped at St. Malachy's in Manhattan. We'll pay a visit there ourselves tomorrow. And until then, remember, you can always watch us online. The address is CurrentsNY.net. And you can also send us an email. The address is drop us a line at CurrentsNY.net. And also, uh, head on over to Facebook. Add us uh, as uh, your, or become a fan of Currents on yep. Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com and search Currents. Well, for all of us here at Currents, I'm Matt McClure. And I'm Francesca Maxime. Thank you so much for watching this Monday. Have a great night.